So in this first video, we're going to look at some of the basic features, just an introduction overview to the Trimble Perspective software that we use with the Trimble X7. So when you open the Perspective software, what you're meeting with is the project screen. So you can see here we already have a project within the Perspective software. It gives you the name, some information, 35 stations, number of images, uh, registration sets and the date. Three dots here. We can delete it, we can edit it, we can change the name and we can merge it. So if we have other scans, we have uh, other scan projects, we have the option to merge multiple projects into one project. Over on the right hand side, we can import. So we can actually import TDX files, Trimble Data Exchange, and there is the option to create a new project to start a new job. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to open this existing project. So on the right hand side, we have some tools which we'll go through and on the left hand side, we have some uh, visualization aids. Up the top, you'll see we've got the name of the project, three bar icon here, all well, allow us to go in just to look at some of the settings. Just to the right of that here, we have an icon for the instrument. You'll see a red cross through this at the moment, which means we're not connected. Just tap that icon there, it will show me um, connections available. So if we have a Wi-Fi connection to one of our scanners, uh, that's all available there. So I'll connect to the scanner. If it's a scanner you've previously used, it should um, connect up itself automatically. Uh, you may just have to check that the Wi-Fi is turned on um, on the device that you're using. So once we're connected, we'll see here that we have uh, this is illuminated in green. We tap that again, I can see some of the settings. So we have our Wi-Fi here, it's telling us our battery, and we also have our storage um, indicated for the SD card. It will tell you the number of scans left based on the, the settings you have in here. If we want here, we can go into settings, or similarly, if we go through the icons here, we can go into the, the same settings. So I'll just take you through those, uh, some of the settings here. So general settings, um, we can turn on sounds, unlock the station leveling. One down here we have is the scan display filter. So one of the options we have to view is we can um, play by the, the nearest number of scans. So here you can select the amount of scans you want it to be. So it can be the nearest 10 scans to your position, the nearest five scans in this case. Unix basic units here, um, coordinate displays, uh, decimal places, images. So you have the number of image you can turn this um, on 15 images or 20, uh, 30 images per scan. And we have um, the opportunity to create a panorama creation, just a preview panorama. So this won't do any blending or anything like that. That will be done on the final export. So it's just a preview image. You can turn that on here. And then the scanner. So this is just a, um, an enhanced um, settings of what we've seen earlier. You can uh, go in and change Wi-Fi settings. We also have storage here, so we have the opportunity to erase all the scans um, from our SD card on the unit. We can format. So over here we have the reports tab. So under this, the first one you have is diagnostics. So you can run a diagnostics check in the X7, which will just check all the components make sure they're working correctly and it will flag up any, any problems that you may have. You also have the option there to, to view the last diagnostics report created. The next one is a fuel calibration. So you can get it to undertake a fuel calibration. Although it does uh, do a calibration prior to every scan, you can get it to do it here and you can check the last calibration. The good thing about running the fuel calibration is it will give you a calibration report if that's something you require. Down here, you have the ability to turn off the, the self-leveling. So we can turn off the self-level compensator um, if you're on a moving object, for, for instance, a boat. Um, instrument LED colouring. If you don't need the colours on, you can turn them off here. And the, the, the instrument's um, level guide colouring. So when you move the instrument around in position, it will uh, flag up red and blue just to tell you that you're out of the self-leveling tolerance and it'll go green when you're within that. Now you can turn these LED lights off here. So 
So we're just going to look at uh, some of the visual settings here. So you have some tools here for rotate. Box tools so we can turn it around in certain angles within a 3D world. If we click that off, it'll take us back into a 2D view. One here we have for fit screen. And then we have our uh, set views. So view from the top, from the left, from the right, etc. This one here is for visuals, so we can um, turn visibility on, turn visibility off. We can also view stations by by time. So again, this will be our proximity setting that we set by five. So it'll be the last five stations within this uh, within this project, or we can do it by proximity. So you can see the proximity to scan thirty three, and it will give you the closest five scans to scan thirty three. Make everything visible, you can turn that back on again. So, if we select this icon here, we see some um, different aids we have here just for visual. So, we can turn this one on and off. This will just give us the, the full cloud or an outline cloud. We can also change the point size, so we can move that up and down, turn stations on and off, station labels on and off. This one here is for our annotations that we can add on, I'll show you that later. And then in here we can change it um, in terms of the colorization of the clouds. So we, have to, we can do it by scan color, we can do it by true color if you've done um, generated the uh, color from images, intensity, elevation there or registration set. You also have the ability to turn the grid on and off and change your background if you want to change it from black to white. So when we're viewing it in here, we're viewing it in plan and 3D, 3D view. Down in the bottom left here, we can also go into our station view. And we now have some different options on here for what we can view and what we can visualize. Up in the top here, we can flick it between different station views. Bottom one here, if we have taken images, we can turn on and off the images. You'll see here that there's been no blending done here. These images are just previewed panoramas that were created. And click down the bottom again to go back into plan view. So some of the things we have on the right hand side on our tools, the first one is our stations. So in here we can see all the stations we have selected. We can actually turn them on and off individually here. Drop down will give us uh, some more information here so we can select to view it. If we need to open the registration tool command, we can do that from here. Or we can just view some of the details um, about this particular scan. Likewise, um, on the plan view, if you were to select one of the points here, you get some, uh, some similar options. So you can register again, you can just view that scan. Um, you have display nearest and we can actually choose to delete our scan here as well. So below stations we have annotations. So annotations are basically markers. So you can select a, a, an object, something on the scan. You can you can attach the annotation to it just to tell you what it is, and you can uh, take a picture if you want. And this will be imported um, into RealWorks or uh, TPC. Measurements command. So we have some tools in here. We can take distance between two points. We can take an area. We can also take direct horizontal or vertical positions, or we can take single points. Below that, we have our notifications. So these are quite important. So as you go throughout the scan, you'll see these notifications flag up uh, just to tell you what, what the process is, whether it's importing a scan, whether it's being registered, and it'll flag up any errors in here as well. So if something does flag up or you find something not right, you can open up the annotations and you can go back through them all just to check to make sure you're happy with everything. So down to the bottom here, uh, we have our scan settings. On the left, you'll see labels. So a label is um, something you can create and attach to each scan. And that way in TBC or RealWorks, you're able to select scans by label. 
and it's just a way so it could be first floor scans, you can select everything by first floor, second floor, etc. On the right, uh, we have register to, so at the moment it's set to last. So what this will do is once we, if we were to do scan one, that would bring it in and then we were to do scan two, it would just register scan two to the last, which would be to one. However, if you move around the job and you're wanting to register to a different one that you're closest to, you can go through here and select and tell it what one you want to register to. Under this uh, bar here, if we hit the up arrow, we now have the options to change our scan settings. So this is done by selecting time. So you have the option to go for a two minute scan, four, seven or 15. Depending on what scan you choose, the point spacing will change and the number of points. So under a two minute scan, it will be 11 mil at 10 meters. In a standard setting, if we go to the four minute scan, five mil at 10 meters. So you'll notice that once we get to four minute scans, we do have the option to move to high sensitivity and that will increase um, or decrease the point spacing. We also have the option here under scan time to add images. We can turn images on and this will see, you'll see here below that this will increase the scan time depending on how many images we set in our settings before. So 15 images we'd set, that will increase uh, the imaging, uh, the time for imaging to one minute. We can also set HDR, which again will increase the time. White balance, you have some options here. You can leave it to automatic. Cloudy, sunny, fluorescent or incandescent. If we tap the little image icon to the left, again it brings up the pop-up. Put more emphasis on the images. Once that's complete, then to start your scan, you're simply pressing start scan. <laughs> 